Hi, I'm Edgar, and my little series on the Armoured Officers for Conflict 47 has been a little delayed due to the painting of the models in this specific video, which I'll cover as we go through. These are, as the others in the series are, metal models from Warlord Games for the science fiction expansion to the bolt-action historical World War II game. I really like the Armoured Officers in particular, my favourite of all the K47 models, so I bought them all, and in this video I'll paint up the German ones. The models are pretty good quality, I know some people think that metal is always low detail, but it's not the 1970s anymore. Most of them have the head and arms separate from the main body piece, but the officer himself has the head and one arm kind of solid with the body. They each have the rucksacks to go on the back, allowing for the best details to be moulded. My Germans for Bolt Action are getting a fairly simple basing scheme, and it starts with just sand. I made sure to completely cover the pudding base, which I did not cut off, because they make for really good gluing surfaces. For the video today, I actually have a fourth model, and this is the free model that Warlord gave out for the large orders on the online shop in January. It's uh, another heavy armoured model for Conflict 47, but this time in the Warlord Resin Plus, and I did a little review of that recently with Ratman, so check that out if you want more information. Well, let's get stuck into painting, and I got them primed up, and with the airbrush I base coated a nice blue-grey, and that's what I've been using for my German armour schemes. The first step with a brush is to get some panel lining done. For this whole series, I've been painting in the black panel lines at the beginning of the paint job, rather than towards the end, which is more traditional. This lets me be a lot messier with it, and I can be a lot stronger with it as well, as later layers will cover up some of it and I can adjust it to suit. I quite like this particular style of armour, kind of having so many flat panels and sharp angles rather than rounded and I had the idea to emphasize that by painting in a slightly darker shadow around the lower edges of each panel. And I'm doing this just inside the edge, and my plan is that later on when I do weathering and highlighting, uh, this would kind of accentuate the panel. Unfortunately, this really didn't come out very clearly at all. But in this turn table shot of the first four steps, you can barely see any of what I've done so far, except for maybe the panel lining. Usually I do these turntable shots a few times during this series of videos so that you can see how each step affects the overall look of the model, but it's almost invisible at this stage. So the next steps will definitely be more visible, and I'm going to fill in some of the colours around the models that aren't the armour. There are some bare metal details of course, the weapons, some vents and the odd hinge here or there that I picked out. I wasn't too worried about which ones should be metal or shouldn't. Uh, these are fictional models after all. There are a few magazine pouches and other web gear on the models, and that would be a great place to add some colour, so naturally I went with brown, because of course I did. One model is carrying a Panzerfaust, that and the officer's cap got a nice dark green. And before I move on to weathering and highlighting, I'll add just some quick markings. This transfer sheet is from the Rubicon Kettenkrad that I did recently, and luckily it includes loads and loads and loads of the Balkan Cruise, the bar cross symbol. There's plenty enough to put one on each of the shoulder armor piece, and I still have some spares. Now even though the shading earlier was sort of an issue, and I did kind of arm and ar about how to continue with the paint job, it is this next step that really slowed me down when I just couldn't work out what to do with it. I mix up my own ink washes. Acrylic ink, matte medium, some surfactant, and plenty of water. My brown wash at the moment is pretty much just how I like it. And I got the ground cover, the pouches, and the skin with that, and that gives me a kickstart for painting those, kind of defining those shapes for later steps. But my pre-made black wash, I didn't have nearly enough water in it, and so it's acting a little more like an inky paint than a wash. And the problem with that is as I was applying it like a wash, it was extremely messy and patchy and blotchy. And as you can see here in this turntable shot, the colours are starting to build up and looking pretty good, and then the black wash just kind of spoils it. 
For the other models, I properly watered down the ink wash and the ended up with the right effect, but I wasn't sure what to do with the officer and the far too heavy wash that he got. Do I strip and repaint? Do I try and clean up the wash or just kind of reapply it? Eventually, I decided to go ahead with painting the other three models and get some practice to see how kind of the next steps would go. One thing I certainly wanted to do was to strengthen the highlights and shape of the models. And so in there with an edge highlight, because I love the edge highlight, of course I do. And I'm using the original gray blue paint. Usually when I do an edge highlight, I'm relatively subtle, doing it fairly thin and only on kind of the higher parts of the model, or the most prominent and important parts of the model. But here to help with that kind of nasty wash, I went really heavy with this edge highlight, kind of covering up a reasonable portion of the edge of each of the panels. And this did save a lot of the effect by limiting the wash to the middle of the panels, but even then, I came back with a stippled glaze of the grey blue, just dotting in the middle of the armour panels to kind of emphasise that as well. And that was fairly subtle, but it worked really nicely to clean up the wash on the officer. I wanted to finish up the rest of the colour just to see if I needed to do any more work to finish up. And so the base has got a dry brush of a light green for that ground cover. I painted in the faces in the way that I usually do, a few layers of mixed lighter brown and Caucasian paints, uh, with more and more Caucasian on each layer for the highest layers. And the last detail to paint was the papers in the officer's hand. Now this is far too small for me to paint as a map, not at my skill level anyway, uh, even though I would like to, and so I just painted it with uh, my paper or cloth paint style, which is actually very similar to the way that I paint skin, just with different colours. Starting with the light brown, I mix in a cream paint over multiple layers. Sometimes I only use three, but here I used a few more, and I went all the way up into white. And just on top of that, a little black squiggly lines to imitate some battlefield notes. And that's about what I can manage at this angle and size. With just a little more cleanup to the armour, I think the models are fairly nicely done now. I didn't do much more work to fix up the wash, but I did kind of do a little bit here and there on the armour, as I kind of was starting to like the dirty armour look. Anyway, these can join my other armoured officers and the other nations that I can get on with painting to complete the set. Let me know in the comments below what you think, the models, my painting, and would you have cleaned up that wash a little bit further? Well, with all that done for now, I can say that I am Edsgar, always will be, and thank you very much for watching.